Hi guys. Well, it has turned into a gorgeous day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here. On this lovely mid-January weekend, is this MLK holiday weekend kicking off here on Saturday, January 16th, 2021, and uh, I am Sam Mitchell, and this is Collapse Chronicles. So guys, I was going to do today's rant, I was going to dedicate uh, today's rant to this myth that Donald Trump is just sitting around uh, on his fat ass, uh, you know, having a temper tantrum during the past week. Uh, anybody who thinks that Donald Trump uh, is just sitting around, obviously, has not been paying attention. Let's just look. Here's three things that Donald Trump has been up to in his final days as chief planet eater. How about outcry as Trump officials to transfer sacred Native American land to miners? As one of its last acts, the Trump administration has set in motion the transfer of sacred Native American lands to a pair of Anglo-Australian mining conglomerates. Okay, how about Trump administration set for its last auction of U.S. oil drilling rights. I just did a story uh, a few days ago about how the Trump administration uh, sold off 1,400 oil drilling leases in the last three months of 2020. One more chance to uh, destroy our public lands the Trump administration will offer the oil and gas industry a final chance to secure federal acreage before the inauguration of President-elect Joe Biden, who has pledged to ban new drilling on public lands. And uh, as I mentioned in that previous round, of course, the, the oil companies have enough drilling permits now to keep doing whatever they want to do, and there's nothing Joe Biden can do about it. And one more, uh, if you think it's all the uh, oil companies, uh, how about Big Green taking advantage of uh, the Planet Eater in Chief? One more, Trump administration unveils last-minute plan to ease development in California desert. The Trump administration has proposed weakening environmental protections for millions of acres of California desert, allowing more room for wind and solar energy projects, mining, and broadband infrastructure. Yes. I uh, like uh, this. Wind and solar developers never embraced the Obama era strategy because they said it left millions of acres of public lands off limits to their projects. Yes, the changes would reduce so called areas of critical environmental concern lands that require special protection by 1.8 million acres and trim the California Desert National Conservation Lands, which are presently closed to energy development by 2.2 million acres. And if anybody does not know what one of these, uh, what we're talking about here, here is a solar farm 
in the California desert. But anyway, guys, you know, I was planning to make a full 30 minute rant about this, but I, I am just so sick of this fat ass. I, I am so sick of him. Even now to read his name, uh, you know, I already had just, just the thought of looking at this fat ass's face, listening to his gangster voice, but now even to read his name, which you can find, you know, scratched into the backs of manatees uh, about 20 miles from where I'm sitting. Uh, I just, uh, while this article also, uh, certainly uh, Donald Trump is at the middle of it. This one just caught my attention, and since uh, I might as well cave in to the distraction because I've... Uh, I always love it when the mainstream media uh, has the word civil war uh, in their headline. And, of course, going into Inauguration Day, the big question on millions of American minds, are we headed into civil war uh, beginning in four days? And uh, the answer to that question... Uh, it, it, it depends on your definition of civil war, I guess. I, I guess I'm glad to hear that Texas is threatening to secede from the United States. Wouldn't that be a loss to the U.S. to have Texas secede from the U.S.? Please, by all means. Uh, okay, this is actually from an English newspaper called The Telegraph. Quote, I need to protect myself in case there is a civil war. Yes, why middle class America is arming up. <clears throat> Brad Vercosa has passed Jimmy's Sports Shop in Mineola, Long Island, New York, countless times. But last Thursday, he approached the counter still in his slippers to buy his first gun. The construction company owner is one of nearly 5 million Americans who have purchased their first firearm over the past 12 months, driving what analysts are calling the greatest gun buying spree in the country's history. The seeds were sown with the onset of the corona panic last spring and then grew in response to Black Lives Matter demonstrations and pro-Trump rallies over the summer. But for many of Jimmy Gong's customers in Mineola, a suburban village 20 miles east of the skyscrapers of Manhattan, the storming of the Capitol by pro-Trump demonstrators on January 6th was the inflection point. The following day, I guess this means January 7th, was one of the busiest days Gong can remember, even accounting for a 150% rise in demand, and he expects business to keep booming. After Donald Trump's impeachment, the FBI warned of possible armed protest and, quote, domestic terrorism amid reports of armed far-right groups planning to gather at all 50 state capital capitals and in Washington, D.C. in the run-up to Joe Biden being sworn in as president. Gong's customers, by contrast, are a diverse microcosm of suburban New Yorkers holding middle-class jobs. With its historic courthouse and banquet halls, Mineola doesn't look like a hot spot for violence, and Vercosa agrees the local mindset is very different from the gun-toting stereotypes of Texas or the Wild West. So, why spend close to $1,000 on a 12-gauge shotgun? Says the construction worker, quote, 
It's just, you never know. The climate that we're in definitely makes me feel like I should protect myself. There might be a civil war. There might be anything, close quote. And this is this uh, man sounding exactly like me with my predictions for 2021. The prediction for 2021 is anything can happen. Civil war can break out this year. Uh, they can announce a fake or real uh, space alien invasion to keep us terrified uh, of, of, of everything. Uh, anything can happen. And whether arming yourself to the teeth uh, is going to make that anything can happen prediction come true more than ever will be left to be, to be seen. It is the same story outside Guns Direct in Burbank, California, where 21-year-old Elliot Smith is waiting to buy his first firearm. He had been debating the decision with his family for some time before finally convinced by the scenes from the Capitol. Quote, It's just, meaning his new gun, is just my precautionary tool my personal belief is that I would not use it unless there was a civil war. Close quote. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what this 21-year-old... Uh, anyway. <clears throat> Behind the counter, James Janya, a 41-year-old former Marine, says he has noticed what he calls an uptick in customers, though nothing like the scale of the early days of the corona panic when lines frequently snaked around the block. By his estimate, you know, this gun dealer uh, estimate, around 80% of customers over the past year have been first-time gun buyers, and the number of women has also sharply increased. Quote, everybody is scared right now. Businesses are closing down. Crime is on the rise. People are saying, defund the police. Well, then who's going to protect me? That is why people are buying guns Close quote. Things are quieter at nearby Burbank Ammo and Guns, where employee Eric Fletcher, uh, which employee Eric Fletcher attributes to record sales in 2020, says uh, Fletcher, quote, I think everyone who is looking to buy a gun has already done it. The supply of guns and ammunition is still low because of the extreme demand last year, close quote. Um, that demand is being driven by both sides of the political spectrum, says Fletcher, quote, we see a diverse mixture, including people who come in wearing clothing that says things like BLM or FTP. If you don't know what, if you see these, uh, this FTP shirt or hat, that means fuck the police, says Fletcher. All right, we're going to go to Austin, Texas, my former uh, hangout. Down in Austin, Texas. A first-time buyer who asked not to be identified says he has always found the idea of gun ownership abhorrent. And yes, these little beautiful people lefties from Austin, well, until now apparently, but 
as a leftist in a deeply conservative state with the highest number of registered weapons in the U.S., the little lefty feels increasingly threatened. Quote, I feel like I did not have much of a choice. The people out there who really love guns are now openly talking about killing people like me. Close quote. Yes, they are. Uh, indeed, while new gun owners certainly contribute to the record-breaking sales figures, a larger factor may be the stockpiling of guns and ammunition by so-called super gun owners. A study by Harvard and Northeastern University in 2017 indicated that nearly half the guns sold in the U.S. were being purchased by just 3% of the population. So 3% of Americans are hoarding 50% of the guns, while the other uh, 97% are, uh, you know, do, do the math here. These, meaning the super gun owners, are the types who gathered last Saturday at Academy Sports and Outdoors in Austin, where I have shopped many times. An hour before the store opened, queuing up in the cold for the chance to buy ammunition, which has been in short supply, uh, their, their faces are obscured by masks. Their faces are obscured by masks, although I don't see much of that in this photo. But their hats and bumper stickers indicate right-wing political affiliations. And this, of course, is in the lefty bastion of Austin, Texas. One wears a shirt with the skull logo from the Punisher, uh, whatever that means, uh, their talk of Joe Biden's imminent inauguration quickly fades when they realize a journalist has joined them. Then the manager delivers unwelcome news, quoting, uh, if you're here for ammo, there is no truck today. Damn, one would-be customer grumbles, it's like this everywhere I go. But we're going to leave Austin and go back to Mineola. Back in Mineola, during what is usually a quiet hour and a, a quiet hour and a half before closing, Jimmy has sold shotguns, rifles, ammunition, and a $2,000 Japanese scimitar. I'm not sure what a scimitar is. I think it's a sword. Uh, quote, a gun is becoming more mainstream, like buying a car. He says, right now, I think people are in panic mode. Close quote. Uh, then I'm unclear what, uh, what this next part of the, oh, it's just some private, where the writer, uh, I, I guess is, uh, just doing a little personal note at, the end, I guess, from Connecticut. Uh, there are right at 75,000 registered guns in Connecticut, which is the 32nd on the national list. Of course, Texas leading the country with 725,000 368 registered guns 
And of course, uh, who knows how many unregistered guns are in Texas. Of course, here in Florida, I expect probably has the highest unregistered gun ownership rate of any state in the country here in Florida. So what does this reporter say? Have I considered getting a gun? Yes. A nearby British friend and I spent many hours walking our dogs discussing the pros and cons. We both knew people from tech, finance, and fashion who now have guns. When a New York publication carried a story, a story on media, on media people licensed to quote, pack heat. I was astonished at how many city gunslingers I knew. A friend's husband tells me he has a hunting rifle, but added, quote, I wouldn't tell you if I own or am licensed to carry a handgun. That is the whole point. Close quote. So, uh, you know, the, this registered guns. It wouldn't surprise me, guys, if, if, if more than half of the guns in this country are, are not registered with any sort of law enforcement agency. Anybody thinking uh, registering guns. But anyway, there you go. So, uh, we will find out on uh, on on Wednesday. Several of you have asked me to render my prediction on how it's going to go down on uh, on Wednesday, both in Washington D.C. and the rest of the country. Good Lord, guys! My guess is as good as yours at this point. Uh, People will die on Wednesday. There will be people who will die in this country uh, on Wednesday, January 20th. Uh, whether any of those people who die will be any names we recognize uh, remains to be seen. Uh, my bottom line prediction is I'm with the 29-year-old construction worker. Anything can happen from this point forward. And you do not need to be a chronicler of the collapse of global industrial civilization to figure this out on your own. And uh, for anybody wondering... Uh, no, I do not own a gun, never have, and don't ever plan to. I have no plans as a 61-year-old Southern white male. I'm an embarrassment to Southern white males everywhere. I do not and do not ever plan to own a gun. Uh, when it gets to that point... I'm just hoping one of these gun owners, like my next door neighbor, uh, this this woman next door to me, what does she have? Let's see. I know she has an AR-15 assault rifle and a little uh, rose pink colored snub nose 38 caliber handgun, at least. Those are the two that I know about. As far as I know, every single one of my neighbors on the rutted out dirt road um, a couple of miles from where I'm sitting own a gun. In New York, I am pretty sure I am the only person on my street in New York who does not own a gun. I'm guessing that every one of my neighbors in Florida and New York uh, own at least one gun and probably more. But anyway, 
Enough uh, chronicling the upcoming Civil War. It has turned into a beautiful day in the collapse of global industrial civilization. And i got to get out there and walk my little dog uh, before Civil War erupts. Or not. In four days. And uh, I suggest you get out there and enjoy whatever you can before Civil War erupts or not in four days. Bye, guys.